Hey everyone and welcome to the Dice Tower. I am Camilla Claycorn. And today I'm going to be looking at a really unique product that came through the office here. It's called BG Shield. BG Shield, it, it touts itself as being, um, being able to party proof your games in such as if uh, protecting it from water spills or wine spills or chip voila, crumblings and all that, as well as they have another product, product that is spray that is used for miniatures. So of course I was really drawn to that one. Um, but, but I've tested it on a couple different things here and want to kind of go over the process of how to use it, what I've liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and of course my recommendations. So first of all, let's start with the boards. The process for putting this on the boards is pretty simple. Uh, you do have to have a piece of felt and then you want to wear gloves of course just to protect yourself. Um, but you'll put it on the felt and then just use circular motions to apply it to the board all over. Of course considering the sides and things like that. Um, then you just let it dry. This process can be really scary <laughs> um, because you're putting it on boards that you love, right? I mean these are your games that you bought that you spent money on and you're purposely applying a liquid. I found that this process was also kind of scary um, with when you look at it visually as well. Uh, I used it on a cheap board and, an, and a more expensive board. So we used it on an old Monopoly copy and then we also used it on, on a spare Quacks board that we had around. And the Monopoly one specifically on the creases kind of got this mottled effect. And, and you can kind of see it here in the pictures where, where the water it looked like it seeped through on the creases or something or got underneath the printed section. This was terrifying. But given time, it completely went away. It did dry clear. It seemed to um, absorb evenly. It, it really, it went away with the time, this modeled effect. But when you first look at it, this board that you love, that you put it on, it is absolutely gut-wrenching to see. So trust that part of the process. After it completely dries though, you then want to take some microfiber cloth and again in those circular motions kind of buff it. Um, because after it's done and when it's dry, it is going to have kind of a little bit of a tacky feel. And to get rid of that, as well as get rid of this matte kind of coating to it, you just do a quick buff on it and then you're ready to go. So we were able to put these, these boards through the ringer. We, we splashed liquid on them, we splashed jelly on them, we splashed lots of nastiness on these boards. And it all came off really, really well. What didn't come off well was the jelly and stuff just by wiping it but I was able to take a wet rag and then wipe it down. What's really fun to see about this too is actually the water pooling on top. So you can see it working immediately. And that was really cool to see. So as far as the boards go, really easy application. The most time consuming part is the drying process and just making sure it completely dries. And then just making sure that you get um, the, the sides of the boards as well so that water's not gonna get in through that part. But overall, that part was really easy to apply and pretty happy with the results. I mean, this is, it was, for what, it does what it says it's going to do. It's going to then repel water on your boards. You just have to make it through that really scary process of seeing your board messed up with that mottled kind of look there in the middle. Uh, for the coins, it was really similar as well. These I did it in one step. I didn't do the front and the back at the same. I will say that one of the yellow coins that I did, a little bit of the yellow coloring came off on the felt. I, I, looking at the coin now, post when it's dried, I don't see that, but there was that little bit of ink that, that came off. Could just be that color. And also, also I did lots of colors. I did green, I did red, black, and the only one that came off was that yellow. So it might've been something in the dye. But again, now after we're looking at them, you can't tell. Feeling them, you can't tell either. Um, I will say, you know, I, I took some of them and kind of rubbed them together and I can't tell if it's going to wear better or worse than having nothing on there. I think that's going to be one that's going to be more, just need the test of time, you know, on that. But it was just as easy to apply and it seems to work. Time is going to have to really tell how, how that goes with coins. Uh, I say coins, but really just any tokens, cardboard, to cardboard tokens and chits. Um, that's going to be more of a time thing. But what I was so excited about and what I instantly uh, called dibs on when it came through the office was the spray for the miniatures. Um, this was really intriguing to me rather than having like a rattle can that you use or sometimes I do a brush on top. I was really intrigued by this idea of just having a spray that you go outside, a couple sprays and that's it. And 
And so I, I did a lot of research on this, how much they recommend, what products they recommend. And for the miniatures specifically, you're going to want to use the, the germ, the kill germ series, which is the green series of these specifically. It's also the only one that comes in a spray bottle. So you want to use the spray one. Um, and then there is no buffing for these. So first, of course, you have to prep your miniatures. I had to paint them. So I went through a regular prime priming process, went through a painting process with them. So I have some contrast paints on some of them. I um, have very little details. I used metallic on some of them. Um, and then of course had some dry brushing and a wash on one of them as well. So I tried to use kind of a lot of the, the whole toolbox of skill set, at least somewhere on each of the miniatures I did this for. And then I sprayed them I couldn't quite hold myself to only spraying them three times <laughs> like Sykes recommended. It just it just made me too nervous. So I, I need to try that again and see like how low can I go with the spray before I kind of lose that protective value of them. But I did just a, a pretty good spray, probably five or six sprays on each, and let it dry completely. So I really let these set sit for a long time. Uh, it's recommended for 24 hours. I think I let it sit for like three days. Um, and then I went to work with them. I kind of, I scraped them on the floor. I put them in my purse. One of them I carried in my purse for an entire week, throwing my keys in there, throwing my chapstick in there, sat in the car. And I, we live in Southern Florida. So, you know, it hit like 85 outside, which meant my car was probably pushing a hundred degrees. Um, I left it sit in the sun I, on the front seat, on the front hot leather. So I really put it through the heat ringer. I put it through the purse ringer. I, I, one of them specifically I actually took my fingernail to just to see what would happen. And I am really impressed with this. I've not seen the paint get goopy or sticky like it sometimes does in the heat and the humidity. They've maintained their texture. They've maintained um, their protectiveness. I will say one of them when I took my fingernail to it scratched, the other one didn't. So be careful with your fingernails maybe, I, I don't know. But um, that's also the same one that sat in my purse. Or sorry, it's not the one that sat in my purse. Um, so I don't, I don't know, but again, how often are you going to be digging a fingernail into it? Um, but then the other one didn't do that. So it, I, I think it really just depends on the surface of the miniature I was doing it. The one that did scratch was on a completely flat surface. The ones that were textured that I did it on, it did not pick up the raised edges. Um, it held really, really well. The finish on this is going to be kind of a satin finish. It's on the, I would say, on the matte side of satin finish, uh, but, it, but it doesn't have a gloss. So it has a, that is my preferred finish, honestly, is I like a little bit of gloss to the finish. I don't really care for a completely matte finish. So this is perfect for me. I found it very easy to use and I've been shockingly surprised with the results. I will say I went into this with very low expectations of what it would be able to do. And it has really held up well for me. So this is something that I look forward to continuing to use on my miniatures going forward as that kind of finishing effect and to, to varnish and protect them. As far as the actual, for the boards, which is the main kind of things that I think people are going to look for this to, I think it worked really well as well. Um, I don't know that I personally would use it on everything, but I have a pretty docile play group. But definitely like any games that I take a lot to different people, to people's houses, maybe some of the party games that are not party games necessarily, but those bigger group games, um, games that I think I'm going to play at family functions where there is going to be a lot of food around and a lot of movement, uh, or maybe just perhaps your absolute, my absolute favorite game that I know is going to get that repetitive play. I could see myself using this on. So I think it's a pretty impressive prod product and definitely one worth checking out. So that's, that's all on this BG Shield. Let me know down below if you've had a chance to try it out, if you have any questions. Um, and also check out the website down below. But this is BG Shield and you've been watching it here at the Dice Tower. I'm Camilla Claghorn. Take care.
something crunchy in there. What's all that jelly? I'm pretty sure that's really expired, Tom. 